Hi, I'm Adam Porter and this is my board gaming vlog and today is an exciting day for me because today I received the first physical copies of my first published board game, Big Bazaar by Blue Orange Games. Uh, they came in a big package in the post, opened it up, loads of copies in there, far more than I'd remembered being as part of the contract, so I've got loads of nice cellophane wrapped copies of Big Bazaar. Big Bazaar is a game that I designed about um, two and a half years ago, I guess, when I first started showing it um, to, well, in fact, I only ever showed it to Blue Orange um, as a result of how well that meeting went. But yeah, so about two and a half years ago, I started playtesting the game, I suppose. And I thought today I'd do a little retrospective of how a game goes from that initial idea through to completion and getting that physical copy in your hands and then hopefully on the local game store shelves. Big Bazaar should be out at Essen Spiel in 2017 in October um, and then it should be widely available around the world. So it's very exciting uh, time and I'm very happy with the way that the process has gone. So it all started in 2015. I was uh, acting in a play and uh, after the play we would go out and have a few drinks and I would take along a party game of some sort for us to play. Now the other cast members weren't big game players but they loved playing these party games. We'd have a real laugh while we had a drink. Uh, and then they would start to ask, could they play one of my prototypes? Because they knew that I was designing games. And the answer was no, because those prototypes were strategy games. They're quite thinky games. Fun, but not funny. You know, we're not laughing out loud while we're having a drink with planning out our turns. And, you know, it wasn't the right atmosphere for it. So I started thinking about how could I come up with a game that they would like to play? And in fact, a game that anybody could play. That's what I really wanted. I wanted to be able to say yes uh, you can play one of my games to anybody. And so I started thinking about the simplest games that I enjoyed. And a lot of them are based are basically similar to Snap, you know, speed reaction type games. I was really enjoying the game Ghost Blitz and um, uh, Speed Cups and Anomia and uh, Snorter and Jungle Speed, these sort of games. Often games where you would turn over a card, someone else would turn over a card, and if the two cards matched in some way, you would have to do something. In Jungle Speed, you have to grab that pole. In Snorter, you have to make the animal noise that's shown on the card. Or in Anomia, you have to say something from a broad category of, uh, of, of different words. Um, and, and, and so I, I tried to come up with a game like that. What I knew I wanted was it must be language independent, so I didn't want text on there. And in fact, I wanted the game to look beautiful um, so that we have all these lovely lavish images in the game. And I came up with a game called Make It Snappy. This was my prototype. Uh, Make It Snappy because it's similar to Snap, right? And it needs go fast, yep. So um, that hasn't made it through the title. I was quite pleased with it, but apparently it won't translate to an international audience. So we have the game Big Bazaar instead, which I'm, I'm very happy with. Here's the original prototype for Make It Snappy. You can see it's a party game for all ages, two to six players. I think the final version, Big Bazaar, is down to three to six players and 10 to 20 minutes seems about right. I like these little boxes for card games. I think these make great prototype cases. We've got a very small sheet of rules. Um, the rules are pretty brief because it's a very simple game. We have this card, which is the original starting card there, and then a deck of cards and a bunch of tokens. And the tokens are just uh, old sequence tokens with little icons stuck on them. The deck of cards I had printed at Printer Studio and I used clip art for the sort of uh, images on it um, of Google, just for sort of proof of concept. This was never gonna be sold like this. So we have a mug, there's always a colored background and then this icon for colorblind players. So there's a mug, here we have a book, um, a key, a lamp, a foot, fork and then so on and some of the items have two things so here's an ant but he's wearing a cape um, a rabbit but he's wearing a watch and a bear but he's wearing underpants okay so that is basically how the original version looked um, so make it snappy uh, I then took it along to my local play testing group who I meet with every week and we played it a lot and it very little changed actually I then got it play tested by a, a, a teacher that I, I'm very good friends with who took it to his school and uh, played it with with lots of the kids there and they sent me sort of recorded feedback so that was excellent to start getting it out to the kids but originally this was planned as an adult sort of party game and then you found that yeah it could adapt to all these different groups I could play it with my young nephews and nieces and they could enjoy it too. 
Here's the box for Big Bazaar. The art is by an artist called Mark Schuinard. He's done a lovely job. There's a lot of art in this game, so it looks lovely. I particularly like the brazen stance of this cow with her udders on full view. Uh, and then down here we have uh, age six plus. So the game has been simplified a little bit for younger players. Three to six players in this version, and it plays in 15 minutes. So I love the box. Um, let's have a look at how the game works. Each card in Big Bazaar has a main element on it, so the, the one with the face, and then a secondary element. Here he's playing the accordion. Um, this one we have a clock and he's eating a hamburger. You also have a background colour to the card and that's also represented by the symbol to help colour blind players. Um, and that makes up the card. Each player is going to have a deck of these cards in front of them so they're divided equally around the table. And so we end up with these cards out here. You also have a rule in the middle. This is the universal rule and something will be put on it. So for example, um, Let's put this one on there. So A, B, C. This means that when two cards match, you're going to race to say the first letter of one of those two cards. So each player in turn turns over a card and puts it alongside their deck. And then if the background colour of any of these cards matches, as it does here, then the two players are going to race to say the first letter of one of the elements on these cards. So you might say C for chicken or L for lamp. First player to do that will take these cards and score them and place them to one side. And so we go on round the table. But every now and then a new colour will come out of the deck and a new rule will be applied to it. So in this instance it means that now if there's two cards that are pink that match, you have to make uh, you have to say something that rhymes with one of those images. If this card came out the deck, the green card, and we put this token on it, it would mean that uh, you now, any time that two green cards come out and match, you have to say where one of those items live. So we now have this process, this mental process we have to go through, where we first recognise what colour the two cards are, so what rule applies, and then you fall over yourself to actually get the words out. There's lots of different rules in there, so we have this one which says um, which of the two items is heaviest, um, on the back here, which uh, what 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 is the accessory on this card? So, for example, here it's the the little lantern. Um, over here, you say the last letter of the word on the card. Here, you say the colour of one of the items on the card. Here, you say how many legs are on the card. Something from the same family as that thing. Here, you make the noise of the item on the card. So there's this real mind-bending stuff trying to remember what the rule is for that colour and then apply it. Uh, and so lots of uh, you know lots of laughter as people struggle to do that. These cards can come out the deck sometimes, which allow a player to reverse the token. And so the rules just keep changing. At the end of the game, players look at their score pile and count up how many cards they've managed to take. The player who's taken the most cards is the winner of the game. Let's have a little look at some more of that artwork. So here we have a camera, he's holding a lollipop, a ghost holding a flower, we've got a pig in a dress, a crab with a ring, a cow with a magnifying glass, we've got a lion with a tennis ball, a kangaroo with a guitar, a snail with a racket, a king with some scissors, um, a moon with a helmet, We've got a wheel and he's riding a bike, um, a witch with a telescope, a compass having a bath, um, or in fact that's a bath with a compass because the face is the primary element. We've got a frog here with a trombone. Um, so all sorts of weird and wacky images, um, a bear with a towel, and so on and so forth. So that's Big Bazaar, and I don't want to pretend that this whole process has been easy. Um, it hasn't, you know, it's, uh, this has been one of the more simpler processes of, of, of the different designs that I've done, um, largely because the game is so simple and also because it got picked up at that initial meeting. In fact, let's have a look at that uh, a recording I made soon after that initial meeting in Essen. The second meeting was with a quite a large company that produces simple games. And one of my games is a very simple game. Um, when I arrived, they weren't expecting me, uh, even though we did have an appointment. So uh, that was a, a potentially a bad start. But yeah, again, it was a company that I had met previously. So we already had a bit of a relationship. So they're very happy to talk to me. Um, I showed them, um, again, my very simple game. And uh, the guy called over uh, his boss um, to come and look at it. And his boss had a look at it and said, we'll sign it said they'd take it um, on the spot really so um, I mean that's that's wonderful obviously I'm, I'm waiting on a contract to sign 
um, which they're going to send out to me. Um, so it was very, very promising. I then showed them another prototype, um, which they took away a copy of, uh, and also were very enthusiastic about that. And this company was very glowing in their sort of praise, which is great. They, they, and they were glowing in their praise last year. I think they are just very friendly, friendly guys. But um, they seem to be very impressed with the, the, the style of prototypes. They seem to like the packaging of my prototypes. Um, and, and my general approach, which which was very pleasing. This is Blue Orange, who make um, King Domino and Dr. Eureka and Top That and Baobab and all these wonderful games that I love. Um, and, and now I'm, I'm talking to them about publishing one of my games. And ultimately, you know, it, that, that's, the, that, that, that's, that's the sort of company that it's going to sit with when it sits on the shelf there. Um, and then you've got the long wait where you don't hear anything from that publisher, um, even after the contract has been signed. And then suddenly out the blue, you're, you're getting emails about artwork and rules and you've got to get your mind back to, well, I was working on that game a year ago and I kind of put it on the shelf because I'm working on other projects. And then another long period of sort of radio silence while you wait for the game to finally come to market. Now it's an exciting time for me because at Essen Spiel, October 2017, the game will be out. It'll be out there in the wild. I'll be able to see what people are making of it, en hopefully enjoying it. And actually, this is not the only game I've got coming out. I've also got the game Doodle Rush by uh, the brilliant guys at Brain Games as well. So two games coming out next month. Very exciting time for me. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, please watch some of my others uh, on my YouTube channel, Adam's Board Game Wales. Follow me on Twitter, at Board Game Wales, and on Board Game Geek, I'm Adam78. Thank you very much for watching, and all the best.